Hello and welcome back to the Grade 11 ELA Unit 6 video series. We are on Week 1, Lesson 3. We've already completed two lessons and days together. I'm excited about the progress we've made so far and I know, know, know that um, the images you came up with in yesterday's lessons are probably really phenomenal. So looking forward to another good day with you all. And so we're going to begin like we always do with a little uh, overview of what's going on and what we've already accomplished. So you've got day one and day two in the books there with vocabulary and summary and reflection on your first read day one, day two, a close read, kind of examining some characters. And now what we have on the horizon is day three. So we're going to be analyzing some text here. Um, we are going to be uh, rereading through Old Man at the Bridge and uh, reviewing the text and responding to questions. Um, and you're going to get a chance to, um, if you feel that way, right some wrongs and uh, give it an alternate ending. So kind of playing the role of author today. So that's going to be uh, really, really interesting. But as you know, we start the day, get our brains warmed up with a riddle. So here we go for today. Gather your people around. Let's see what we've got going. So the beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the beginning of every end at, and the end of every place. Now, this is a really old riddle, like 1820s. OK, um, so take a look at the text. This is one of those riddles that's better read than it is heard. And so that's the only clue I'm going to give you without pointing you to Google. So take some time, take a beat, as you know, to avoid the spoiler. I'm going to give you some time. All right. What is it? The answer is coming now. It is the letter E, the beginning of eternity. Eternity starts with E, the end of time and space. Both those words end with E, beginning of every end and the end of every place. You get the gist, all right? Um, the first time I saw this one, I got way too deep and I missed it completely. And when I just started looking at the words on the surface and took things at face value, at least in this instance, it's, it paid off. But the type of thinking that it requires to do these riddles that we're doing every day is the same type of thinking it requires to unpack and evaluate these texts. That's why we do them. We get your brain kind of thinking in that direction so that you're ready to go. You're warmed up. Um, and we can really go after some things. So excited to do that again for you today. So resources and materials, you're going to need the old man and the bridge text again, your learning packet, lesson three, um, overview, as well as the note catcher, your pen or pencil and your smartphone or device optional as always. Lesson three overview, we are analyzing today your targets. I can evaluate the thoughts and feelings, not just observing anymore and actions of the characters in the story. I can connect the plot and theme of the story to the essential question and the theme of the unit, knowing that they're linked, but they may not necessarily be exactly the same. You're going to reread Old Man at the Bridge. You're going to think through these questions. So this time you're not necessarily annotating. You're reading these questions first and you're thinking through exactly what the answer might be based on your knowledge of the story so far. So who is the narrator of the old man at the bridge? Remember, this is a narrative short story. So think about that um, and identify three thoughts and feelings that the narrator shares with his readers. Remember, we talked about thoughts and feelings yesterday and how sometimes those aren't explicit, meaning they aren't written directly in the text. They're implied. So when you go back to look for those things, consider that. And how does the author's portrayal of the old man and the soldier support the theme of the story? So now we're starting to get into how the story is kind of put together. You're going to talk with your family member, caregiver or friend about specific examples from the text that support your answer. Again, where are your receipts? Where's your evidence? Talking about your answers to the think question. And then in the right section, you're going to find a chart that has you comparing and contrasting the two characters of the old man and the soldier. And then finally, your closing activity to reinforce your learning um, is an examination of the end of the story. That final line that is just heartbreaking. There was nothing to be done for him. How did you all feel about that? So think about how you feel about that and consider that as you consider your alternate ending. All right. So that's what's coming for you today. So first things first, you're going to look at that note catcher here and uh, think and talk are combined together because you are actually going to be 
um, thinking about these questions, talking about the questions, and then writing about the questions, um, utilizing evidence. So what I'm going to do with you today as a model is kind of let you inside of my head about how I would look at these questions first and then how I would start thinking about the answer. So first and foremost, um, I know that Old Man at the Bridge is a narrative short story. And the question asked me, who is the narrator of the Old Man at the Bridge? So first, I need to determine whose point of view the story is told from. So I know if it's a narrative short story, that the narrator tells a story. But I also know the identity of the narrator if I look closely. So once I've examined who or identified who that um, person is, and I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to let you figure that out then you're going to find three thoughts and feelings that that person shares with their readers directly or indirectly. All right. So again, the thinking here is if I already know it's a narrative short story, meaning it's told from the perspective of the narrator. So whoever is speaking and kind of controls the narrative of the story, that character is the narrator. So who is it? I'm not going to tell you, you're going to figure that out. And then number two, how does the author's portrayal of the old man and the soldier support the theme of the story? So the author makes some very intentional choices about how he chooses to um, portray each character. How does he characterize them? And one way I can figure that out is I can go back to my annotations from lessons one and two. Those are tremendous places to start because I was already making reactions to people's behaviors, um, making some inferences or um, kind of conjecturing or hypothesizing about or guessing about um, what people were thinking and feeling. So I need to go back to those annotations in the text and there I'm going to find some good answers and some good suggestions. So that is the type of thinking that I would do. And those would be some good places to start in your brain, in your notes and in the text if you want to respond to those two questions. And talking about it is going to help you clarify even more. So I encourage you to do that. The next piece I'm going to talk you through is the compare and contrast of the old man and the soldier. So you're going to have these two focal point characters in the story. You're going to put them side by side. You're going to think about what do they have in common and how are they different? And in order to, there are so many different things that you can focus on here, but I want you to think about three different areas, their appearance, their emotions, and their actions. All three things are things that you've annotated already before in lesson one and two. So they should be easy to find in the text. I want you to write brief descriptions in each category for each character. All right. And provide specific examples from the text. I mean, you're not just saying, well, the old man was dusty and he's old and the soldier is probably young and that's it. Like you need to provide me examples from the text. Even if you include the line number and page number on page 755, line 28, et cetera. Be specific. Give me examples. Um, and then uh, after you've done that, you're going to revisit the ending of the old man at the bridge. Remember that kind of killer line at the end? There was nothing to be done for him. Right. If that rubbed you the wrong way or if you were like, wow, that was deep, you know. Whatever it was, this is your opportunity to rewrite the ending. Do you agree that there was nothing to be done? If not, then maybe you should change it. What could have been done? If you think it could have been more dramatic or the old man could have said something in response, whatever it is, use your imagination, get creative, pick up that pen or pencil and rewrite that ending. I think it's going to be great. All of this is going to come back to bear again tomorrow for you. So again, nothing that you're doing here is wasted time or energy. It's all building. So it's your turn now. You're going to go do your think and talk. Write down your responses and answers. Record them in that note catcher. You're going to do your write, which is a compare and a contrast. And then you're going to close uh, with your alternate ending. Take some time there. Really think about how to do that well. And maybe even run that you know, alternate ending by the person that you've been engaging with, family member, caregiver, or friend, um, as you've read the story. Because now, by now, um, they probably know the end of the story and would love to hear what you came up with um, and get their opinion. So again, looking forward to you guys being very creative this time around as you close out your learning. You can always pause, replay as many times as you need to hear and see the modeling again. But 
you've done great work over the past couple days. So you are more than prepared to engage um, and complete these activities. We are building capacity day after day. You guys are great. And looking to next time, lesson four, final lesson for the week, ladies and gentlemen, steep mountain to climb, climb, but we got there. We are moving on to analyzing craft and structure. This is where we take off um, our reader's lens and we put on our writer's lens and really examine um, how the author made certain choices um, to communicate the plot, the theme, the characters, and to make the reader feel a certain kind of way. So our target for tomorrow will be, I can explain how the author uses descriptive language and dialogue to develop the plot, characters, and themes of the story. I can describe the impact that the author's representation of the characters in the story has on the reader. All of that should seem doable because of the work you've done so far, and that's because it is. So again, looking forward to another successful day with you tomorrow. Remember to complete all those, act those activities, get help where you need it, and I'll see you here again.